beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Australia. The lovely Mick in Australia has sent us some more beer. Cheers, Mick. Uh, this is by Sailor's Grave Brewing Company. I've had a good few of their beers. And this is a can of their Dark Emu Dark Lager. It's a 355 milliliter can coming in at 4.8% ABV. Ignore the condensation on the can. I got the can out the fridge about 35 minutes ago. So it's gone from four degrees up to about maybe seven or eight. And I think that's the perfect temperature for a lager or a perfect temperature that I like to drink lager at. If you drink a lager too cold, certainly a dark lager like this with lots of, I'm presuming, roasted malt. Maybe Vienna malts maybe in here. Then you want to be able to taste the Vienna malt. You want to be able to taste the roasted malts. And you're only going to be able to do that if you warm it up a little bit. Because if you drink beer too cold, it hides flavour. Breweries who ask you to drink beer or their beer freezing cold, extra cold, they're just masking. They're masking the cheapness of the beer. So, uh, this glass here has a little widget in the bottom, hence the lots of carbonation and the way the head's sticking around. We've got a three to four finger, slightly off-white head here. It's a, I'd say, what, what they've, they've called it a dark lager. Um, I suppose thinking about, thinking about it, Lagers are light, aren't they? They're, they're straw coloured. So anything amber in colour for a lager, I suppose you can qualify it as a dark lager. I didn't know what to expect. It's an Australian brewer, brewery. Um, I was kind of thinking it might be black, black as a, as a lager, like some of them are. But yeah, this is this is amber in colour. A little bit of haze there. Let's get the aroma. Oh yeah, definitely a little bit of Vienna malt in there. This is going to be good. One of my favourite beer styles is Vienna Lager, that kind of biscuity kind of nuttiness that comes through from the malt and all that clean, drinkable bitterness then from the lager, yeah. Smells good. A little bit peppery, a little bit spicy. Should we dive in? Cheers, everybody. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Very crisp, very clean. Nice hoppiness on the back end. It's giving off flavours of almost like a it's a combination of very light grapefruit and orange peel with a little bit of tartness, a little bit of kind of raspberry I'm picking up, or maybe a touch of strawberry. Really interesting, really interesting beer. Yeah, nice and biscuity, bready, nutty, very drinkable. Uh, let's see if the beer now, now I've whirled up the possible sediment in the bottom of the can. It has, now, now have a look at the beer now. Now I've added that little bit of sediment in the into the bottom of the glass. It's, it's a very different beer now. It, it, it's slightly more hazy, definitely hazier. And there's more of an orange hue coming through now. More, it's more an illuminated orange, if that makes sense. It also has got a tighter head. The head has got a lot tighter. It's a three finger tight creamy head. And again, what I like about 
there is still a lot of carbonation in the bottom of the beer here. You can see it there. But what I like about kind of whirling that little bit of sediment from the bottom of the can is that whenever you get it into the beer, it just calms it down a little bit. It knocks some of the carbonation out of it and it always makes the head a bit tighter. Let's see if there's a difference in the taste, aroma and taste. Not really in the aroma, you're still picking up that kind of bready, nutty, biscuitiness from the malt. Ooh. Maybe at a push, maybe at a push, there's a little bit more of a an orange marmalade flavour coming through. Definitely mixing with that kind of spicy, peppery bitterness on the back end. It's a cracker of a beer. I've not had a beer from Sailor's Grave for a while. Um, there's always a brewery from Australia that put a smile on my face. Um, it's, it's cracking stuff, it really is. I'm getting quite excited for the channel. Um, I don't like to overly talk about it because um, I consider myself a really humble guy. But my kids are getting to the age now, as I speak, as I speak right now, my daughter is doing her GCSEs. She's doing, um, for some reason, they start to do it a little bit earlier in life these days. They split it from like, she's only 14, about to be 15. So they do some this year and then they're going to do some next year. So I'm getting to the stage now where I'm almost kind of like seeing them off to university. Now, I mean that with the greatest of respects for my children. Love them to bits. But the channel's growing nicely. My children are becoming even more independent. And I, I, I feel, and this all will, will make sense in a second, I feel like I'm tantalisingly close to visiting places like Australia and America and, and all of these wonderful kind of places. I've been around most of Europe. I love Europe. I, you know, I barely skimmed the surface of Europe. I need to go and see more of Europe. But I would love to see Australia, America, Japan. Oh, and, and just, I don't want to go there for a few days. The kids were young, it would be a few days, you know. Get the kids to a certain age where they're packing their bags and they're going off to university, then I can come for three weeks. I can come for four weeks. You know, they're in their university digs for six weeks at a time. It's getting closer and closer. And with the growth of the channel, with the way the channel's growing, it's all getting tantalisingly close. This whole kind of travel plan that I have in place it's just a game of patience. But I think life is a game of patience, isn't it? I think, I think, you, you know, the, the, what's, the, what's that old saying? The, 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 oh, the, the patient man wins the game or something? Or, or, or the, the, anyway, anyway. Um, point is, I feel like I'm starting to get closer and closer to visiting fantastic countries all around the world for, for, for weeks on end and I'm able to I'll be able to take a little Apple laptop and I'll be able to upload the videos whilst I'm there I'll be able to move around visit different breweries visit different states visit different countries start uploading content content on the move and it'll be a proper travel beer and food channel Oh, I'm really excited for it. It's just got to be a bit patient. But um, yeah, the, the reason why I'm smiling is because Sailor's Grave will be one of the breweries that I want to go and see. Definitely. This beer is fantastic. There's a big, long description on the back of this can, which um, I'll ask you to pause the video and, and have a little bit of a read if you want to. But I'm going to rate it. I'm going to rate this one. Independent Australian beer. Um, are they? I think they're from. Are they from? 
I'm going to hazard a guess here. I can't see the address. Maybe Sydney in Australia. Victoria. Victoria, Australia. I've just seen it down the back of the can. Anyway, rating for this dark la emu dark lager. Looks good. Smells good. Tastes good. I really like it. Really tasty beer. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 from Real Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.